Hello everybody! So I'm so excited to talk to you today about the pickled steel Hakal. This is an exceptional knife, perfect for EDC, perfect for the everyday user, the hard worker. This is the one. This is the one for the win. Let me just start off with this. If you have a tight budget, you can only afford one knife from pickled steel. Let it be this one. This is the way to go. <laughs> it's an incredible knife, it really is. I've been carrying it around for a little while and it has served me well. So today we're just doing a review um, of this knife and I'm just going to tell you what I like about it and uh, yeah, so show, show you a few things about it and um, that stood out to me. It's a very interesting knife, very very cool design. So it comes shipped in this box and then within that box you find this awesome zipper pouch and I was like ooh this is so cool and so I opened it and inside I found the pickled steel Hakal. And yes, that is how you say it. Afrikaans guys will have an easy time remembering it. It's just the same as Hakal. So Hakal. Um, very beautiful knife. Awesome, uh, awesome zipper pouch. It has this sort of a sheep's wool inner. So it will keep your knife safe, but also warm at night. When you are not carrying it around, but sleeping. It also came with this microfiber cloth. Thank you Pickled Steel, just for the extras. We really appreciate that. Here we go guys. Pickled Steel Hakal. First look, Woo! awesome, first look for you guys maybe, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that is crazy cool, I love the finish on the blade, it has a bead blast, sand blasted finish on the blade, and that is just amazing, great finish right there, so yeah, this blade is in 14C28N, comes with nice textured G10 scales, and it is a button lock. So, Akal. Let's just think about that one for a minute. Why would they call it the Akal? So, it's very interesting. The Akal in Nordic. In Nordic, na Akal means a shark type fish. And when you look at the design of this knife, you do see that it does resemble a shark in stealth mode. <laughs> so, it's a, it, de it definitely resembles a shark. You can see that clearly. Um, you know, they designed this knife. Very awesome. I love that. And that is one of the big reasons why I bought this knife. Um, is for that design factor. So yeah, very cool knife. Really like it. The fidgety factor is phenomenal. It's fantastic. Now let me just talk about the, the different ranges at Pickled Steel. We have the premium range. And this is the first knife within the premium range. We have the budget range. So everything like the, the Wahoo or the Nebula, or the Joker, or the Halo, that's all in the budget range. Then we have the Damascus range, so like the Divine, the Toko, the Kaya, uh, the Gator, the Raptor, that's all in the, Dam in the Damascus range, and then we have the Titanium range. So that's a, a new thing, um, I think they've been doing it and planning it for a few months, and the, f the first one came out a while ago, it's called the Pixie. Sort of, I don't know, related to like a CRKT squid, that type of vibe. So it's a smaller blade, but it has a titanium scales and it has 10 CR cordless Damascus, which is ridiculously cool. Um, yeah, then they also have the Nebula now in M390 with a DLC coating and titanium scales. This is just the normal Nebula, I'm just showing you guys. They also have a Valkyrie out now. Um, in titanium, it's coming out I think middle April uh, in titanium with M390 blade steel, so very cool but let's get to this knife, this knife is in the premium range and there are four variants and I will put the photos up now So, you can see you get a, a knife like this, a black G10 with a bead blasted uh, finish, steel finish. Then you have a OD green one with the exact same finish, same hardware style, very cool. Then you have the blacked out one, so DLC coating on the hardware and then the black G10. And then you have the OD green one with the black DLC hardware 
and blade. So um, very cool knives. I also like the I like the OD1 with the black DLC. That's very cool. But I prefer this knife for one reason, and it's a personal reason. Okay, the reason is that for me it looks the most like a shark, and that is uh, what the, what it was designed to look at. So with that stone wash, it does resemble that light grey um, that you also find on some sharks. Uh, so that's very awesome. And actually, you know, my profession is for part of the year is usually um, training, instructing, supervising, and leading life saving crews on different beaches in the Western Cape. Unfortunately, I did break my leg in 20 places last year, so I couldn't work this season. But um, yeah, that is something that I do, something that I love. And I was in this, in this uh, situation <laughs> about four years ago where we saved a great white shark. And I will just put a photo of that up. Okay, so, and there will be a link in the description to that video, but we ended up saving this juvenile great white shark. It was awesome. Um, and yeah, at this, at this time, I didn't really, I didn't really understand, you know, what big of a deal it is and everything. And I didn't think that much of it. I just felt that it was awesome holding a great white in my arms. But then the video kind of went viral and it ended up on National Geographic and it was just a, a big story. But to me, that day was just special. Being so close to that creature, you know, was, was incredible. And um, something that's so feared, so terrifying, but so beautiful um, and majestic is, it was awesome. So yeah, it's nice to carry around a knife that reminds me of that for me. And I really want to encourage you guys to find that special thing within your knife. If you are going to carry around a knife for EDC, don't just make it practical, also make it personal. Whether it be the Wahoo or the Nebula or whatever knife, you know, um, maybe a honey badger, it doesn't have to be necessarily a pickled steel knife or a CRKT or whatever. Um, just, just sit with your knife a little bit. Maybe you own lots of knives. Go sit with one of your knives and just think about how it makes you feel, uh, what it reminds you of, the memories that come up regarding that knife. And yeah, it's nice to have that personal thing and be reminded of those awesome times in your life. Um, especially if you're going to carry it around. For instance, with the Wahoo, I would like to carry the Wahoo because it reminds me of spearfishing. It opens conversation to spearfishing. So I might talk about knives and then take out this guy and then speak about wahoos and then that will lead me to spearfishing. So yeah, I just, I, I enjoy that part. I enjoy it when a knife kind of has a cool design that stands out to you or has a personal meaning to you. Like with the Toko, go check out that video I mentioned. It looks like a prehistoric creature looking angrily at me, but also within the the design of the handle, you see like mountains, a cutout of, of a or outline of mountains, which is just fantastic. Um, but yeah, so this will be my new EDC, not just for personal reasons, but also for practical reasons, because it is a fantastic knife for the knife itself. The overall length is 20 centimeters. It has a blade length of eight and a half centimeters, so nice cutting edge. It's not the biggest knife in the world, but it's perfect for EDC. Um, comparable to uh, honey badger large is like a centimeter smaller with the wahoo it is just the same size as the wahoo so if you own a wahoo and you like that size this is the knife for you blade thickness three millimeters so it's a nice it's a it's like the the best thickness um that you can have on an edc blade that you will be using for basically everything um i think three millimeters it's it's a little bit bigger than your average i'd say um edc knife but I, I enjoy a thicker blade because then I don't really have to worry about, you know, the blade breaking and stuff like that. And I can use it also for different things. I can, it doesn't have like a four millimeter stock, like an outdoor fixed blade or whatever, but I can use this thing in a mountain. I can use this thing for camping purposes, whatever, you know, um, it's thick enough. It's tough enough. That's for sure. So this thing will last you a long, long time. Um, but yeah, let's look at the blade shape real quick. So we have a two angled grind, which will reinforce that tip. We have a flat grind on this drop point style blade, which is very practical because you can pierce with it. You can cut all kinds of things with it. You can do food prep with it. You can even eat biltong with this knife. So um, not specific in one area, but very practical in the overall different things that you will face on a daily basis. That 14C28N blade steel is just phenomenal. I think all knife enthusiasts would agree that that is really a nice steel for your blade. Um, it's just 
overall good, good corrosion resistance, good edge retention, um, sharpens very well. So yeah, very good steel. I think you, you will find it difficult to find a knife for under 1700 Rand with a 14C28N blade steel. So this knife is coming in at 1000 Rand. So that is a steel, to be honest. Um, if <laughs> it really is a steal, especially with the whole button lock aspect of it and, and everything is just, yeah, it is a very, very good price. Um, so basically it's a premium knife with a, with a budget price tag. <laughs> That's how I can describe it. So yeah, um, uh, it has a finger tab offered by the, the, the finger, uh, by the flipper. Um, so you can rest your finger in there. It does have some good jumping, which you don't really see on the budget range. Uh, but I've never had a problem with my hand slipping on the budget knives. But yeah, you do get that extra grip. So this knife was designed to work hard. I know, I spoke to the owner about it. And it's nice that they included the, the jumping and thought about how they can make this thing even more functional, even more practical within a hard use scenario. So very nice, it does have a, a flipper tab for deployment. It has a reverse thumb stud and a normal thumb stud. So you can open this knife multiple different ways and it works great. The action is fantastic. Um, it runs on, on ball bearings. Um, yeah, so great action on this plate. And then let's just talk about the uniformity on this knife. So this was interesting to me. And I, I found it, it, yeah, it just adds to the quality a lot. So the face of the thumb stud, the face of the pivot and the face of the button lock are all satin finish to match also the screws. Okay. And I think if they would have left this thumb stud with a bead plastic finish, it would have looked out of place. The, the thumb studs are bead plastic, um, you know, on, on the body, but on the face, it is satin finish to create that uniform look between the, the all the different circular aspects of the knife, which is very cool. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the, the liners. The liners is also bead blasted um, or, or sand blasted. Uh, so that again adds to the, the uniformity with the, the blade finish. And as a, same story with the pocket clip, it is stainless steel pocket clip, but it is bead blasted and does fit the, the blade uh, finish very well. The liners are flush with the scales, uh, so it's even, no sharp edges, nothing like that. Uh, very, very good finish on this blade overall. It does have, um, it is skeletonized, sorry, it is skeletonized and that does reduce the weight a lot, but this is a very solid knife. You know, it's very stable, very solid, no flex in this knife at all. Um, uh, yeah, the, the scales are G10, black G10 textured, and it's an awesome texture on this G10. Very grippy, very nice. Um, does have some contours here to add to that ergonomic, uh, to the ergonomics of this knife. And this is a very comfortable knife to hold and to use I'm guessing for long periods of time, as you can see, my pinky isn't running on the edge. It is fitting my hand perfectly. And I do have large hands, so yours will probably fit also. Very nice backspacer, G10 backspacer, that runs all the way around. Um, yeah, and just leads to, to the added stability in, in the handle of this knife. Uh, I do encourage you guys to go check out um, how a button lock actually works. It's fascinating, the engineering behind it. So, yeah, but this one does have a, a very nice button lock. No problem with getting to that button and pushing it all the way in. Um, it, is, it is perfect in that regard. Yes, do have a very functional lanyard tool. It has recessed screws on the scales, but then with the pocket clip, the pocket clip is recessed, but the, the screws with the pocket clip is not uh, recessed. So, yeah, I haven't found a problem with that with regards to uh, carrying this knife. It is deep carry pocket clip. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe you have a serious problem with that. I really don't. I found it still functional. It's working great. It's not. Um, there's no rough edges on those screws. 
uh, it does have a smooth kind of a, a rounded finish so goes in and out of the pocket very easily yeah great knife guys um, and as i mentioned for a thousand rand getting a button lock with awesome g10 scales and a 14c28n blade steel how can you go wrong how can you go wrong this thing will last forever <laughs> this is an amazing knife and it's great in all the different aspects that fidget factor is next level um, the blade steel is next level the blade shape is fantastic the ergos is awesome um, so yeah you really <laughs> you won't be able to get better quality um, not just for the price but maybe even for double the price of this knife so yeah fantastic knife guys check out the pickled steel i call uh, it has an awesome story it has an awesome name it has an awesome uh, arsenal of materials so get yourself a pickled steel i call if you like this video subscribe i am still going to do the nebula i'm going to do um, the kaya the raptor there are many different videos still waiting pick up the pickled steel i call have a great day and uh, i will see you soon